One more thing I need to talk about before we start playing. I know this is taking forever, guys, but um, I know there are at least some of you who have never never played the game or never really paid attention to it that much and would like to know how to play, so bear with me. Now, there are certain resources in the game and there's uh, more than uh, one. We have energy, we have metal, we have rare materials, we have oil, supplies and money. Then we have, well, I don't know how to call these, uh, they're like secondary, secondary uh, resources and they're gained a bit different than uh, the ones, the six, one, six of these that I spoke about. That's manpower, nuclear bombs, descent and transport capacity. So, let me start uh, with explanation. Energy uh, is used and produced by your industry. So, if you run out of energy, pretty much your entire economy shuts down. Kind of figures when this is, uh, you know, the 20th century, you need electricity for anything. Metal, metal is used to construct units pretty much, uh, so once you run out of it, your production slows down significantly. Rare materials are pretty much the same as metal, but I think they, they are used by industry as well. Metal, metal, I think, is used by industry as well. Oil, uh, oil is used to power industry and uh, planes and tanks and stuff like that. So oil pretty much um, is necessary for your entire army to function. Infantry and cavalry is an exception because obviously they do not drink oil. But once we get our hands on heavy units, uh, we will need to make sure that we have enough oil. Supplies are used every day for every single unit. Once your unit runs out of supplies, it uh, its fighting capabilities skydive and crash on the head on a concrete concrete road so we have to make sure we have supplies once we run out uh, we can pretty much give up because our armies will be crushed and money are an arbitra arbitrary uh, unit of measurement pretty much the same as um, money in the real world they pay no well, you know, you produce them as a country, you can set up uh, your economy to produce more consumer goods, which will in turn produce more money, you can trade for money, everybody needs money. You pay these also for research, so once you run out of money, uh, your research drops to I think a quarter or maybe a half, I'm not entirely sure. Now manpower, we have very low manpower, it increases daily. On the other hand, once we mobilize, uh, we will get a huge boost, so we don't really need to think about that. Uh, pretty much every unit, uh, by the way, I don't think I mentioned that, has a manpower and organization. A manpower, once it runs out of manpower, it is destroyed. Once it runs out of organization, it uh, breaks and runs away. So you need to keep these uh, both as high up as possible. Organization is uh, replenished daily, and um, manpower is uh, replenished depending on your reinforcements tab. Okay, uh, nuclear bombs, that's self-explanatory. Descent um, lowers your capabilities, I think, both in economy production and uh, in war. Pretty much any descent is bad. Transport capacity, I'm going to read out loud. Transport capacity represents trucks, trains, and river barges. When available, truck, uh, when available transport capacity is overloaded, divisions move and regain organization more slowly. Transport capacity is a direct function of industrial capacity. Each point of IC gives you 1.5 TC. Currently, we are using 21 uh, transport capacity out of 40. This one is modified by technology, minister modifier, fuel and supply transportation, and our current supply efficiency is 100%. Um, we will need to keep an eye on this. Of course, once you send your troops all the way into the middle of Russia, uh, this grows exponentially and so drops your capability to fight, but on the other way around. Now, industrial capacity is what we will use according to our sliders. Now, 
we have a couple of possibilities here. We have consumer goods, which are used to lower the sand and sell for money. We have production, which is used to construct units. We have supplies, which increase your supplies, obviously. Then reinforcements. Now, we are not going to reinforce our units, because once we uh, mobilize, all of our units will be immediately uh, replenished to 100%. Upgrades, though, we will use. Upgrades are used for uh, upgrading your armies up to par with the technological advancements you have. So, at this point we don't really have much, but last time when I was playing Italy we got somewhere to around need 200, so... Yeah. The game works in a way that you have, uh, say, 1907 infantry. Uh, it can then be upgraded to 1914, then to 1916, then to 1918. So, you need to step up uh, through all of the steps. Which is kind of logical, uh, you can only train them so much. Now, last thing I promise before we start playing is that, as I talked about divisions, uh, each of the units that has uh, um, division character, I would say, for example, cavalry or infantry division, can have a brigade attachment. Brigade is a smaller uh, military unit and this will give a certain boost. Now, why I'm talking about this is because we'll start by producing brigade attachments. For example, the artillery, which we will produce now, gives extra soft attack and lowers the defensive and offensive vulnerability of unit it is attached to, but also lowers the speed and increases the supply consumption. So you need to be careful, but it pays off to have as much um, brigade attachments to a unit as you can have. I think that infantry can have two or one. Uh, suppression to I'm, I'm not actually sure. It shows you somewhere. Maybe on here. Oh, two attachments. Okay, this unit, so every infantry unit can have two brigade attachments and it shows you which. So, for example, infantry can have anything. It can have artillery, military police, engineers, cavalry, and this one is super heavy artillery. Now, I don't want to produce infantry because it is um, already uh, way outdated. So, we'll start with the brigade attachments, which are fine for us. We'll go with two parallel rounds, and we'll go with, say, five serial rounds, which will cost us... Uh, 7.5 industrial capacity uh, to produce and if we have that much it will take 529 days to develop but after that we'll have 10 artillery brigades so let's start the production and now by the way we are already playing so yay everyone <laughs> We need to look at this a bit. Now I'm going to keep consum consumer goods on 8.8 .8 because that's lowering our descent and we should have a lot of money for that. Uh, but I'm going to slightly lower the supplies, which might seem counterproductive, but we'll bump it up later on. Say so we'll lower to 5. Uh, uh, and we'll devote some to production and we'll devote some to upgrades because I want to upgrade the units that uh, are in need of upgrading should be capable to fit this in yes okay so now we have 8.8 uh, industrial capacity in consumer goods 6.2 in production which will allow us to have uh, this at 100 uh, percent production and this at something 80 I guess or maybe 75 uh, supplies we have a bit over what we need reinforcements at zero and we'll upgrade a couple of our units we have the technology settled so what we need to do now is let a day pass and it will show us the correct value for our uh, materials. We'll need to keep an eye on that. You need everything in green to be happy. If you don't have everything in green, you are in for trouble. Unless you have a huge stockpile, which we don't. Okay, well, this doesn't really look good. We have 
minus 32.97 energy and we have minus 22 uh, metal both per day so we have about oh uh, we can hold on for some time but i would like to fix this but the good news is that we're getting 0.74 money per day which is quite a lot we're getting 2.56 uh, supplies we are getting oh almost 15 oil per day that's great and 8.51 rare materials good you can see our descent already uh, lowered itself time has come to look at our politic situation and check if we uh, can get some better ministers before that uh, we'll have to change our politics though we have well, uh, let me just explain it, then I'll show you what we're going to do. We are between democratic and authoritarian uh, government. This uh, decides on how your descent will grow, how much partisan activity you will have, how much descent you will gain for a war declaration and releasing a puppet. We are oh, quite far on the political right. This doesn't really change anything directly, but uh, influences the events and ministers you can get. We are rather close to society, which lowers our descent and tech team salary. Uh, it also lowers the descent in national provinces, but increases the descent in occupied provinces, both by 30%. Army counterintelligence is increased by 30%, and domestic counterintelligence increased by 117 uh, we cannot go towards free market though, we could go towards free planning, uh, towards central planning, sorry, free market and central planning. Uh, that would increase the upgrade cost for us though, and upgrade time, but lower the tech team salary and amount of money we gain from consumer goods, so I don't want to do that. We cannot change the mobilization and demobilization um, slider, that one is only influenced by events. But we can change the hawk lobby compared to dove lobby and interventionism towards isolationism. Now hawk lobby uh, lowers the descent, the production time, production cost, but increases the diplomatic action cost. Uh, it's the other way around uh, when you look at the dove lobby. And then one also incre increases the money from consumer goods, that's not that bad. Interventionism towards isolationism is something really important. You guys uh, suggested on several occasions that we should invade Persia. The way this game works is that you can declare war on anyone if their belligerence is high enough. <coughs> Pardon me. So for example, Persia at this point, god damn it, Persia has belligerence of zero. And as our country is uh, set, we need uh, <laughs> belligerent 69 to be able to declare war. That's because we're mostly isolationist. If we were all the way here, it would help. We would need way lower. And you can increase the belligerence of enemy state by sending spies into it. Uh, but again, that's quite costly. So, what are we going to go with hawk lobby or interventionism well uh, i think that we'll go towards hawk lobby because that helps uh, with most of the things we need it lowers the production time the cost and descent growth so let's go with that uh, however later on we'll go definitely with interventionism all the way because we need to get involved otherwise we just might give up on things let's look at the politicians we have now we have mehmed the fifth who increases diplomatic mission cost, which is uh, not good, but he increases the unit's organization regain by 5%. That's good. The very stiff neck is not the right man for this job. He tries to compensate for this with an aristocratic manner and stiff necked acting. When it comes to politics, uh, he's very and indecisive, always fearing that his lack of talent will show through his facade. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much what I talked about. The head of government we can't change either, but it's Said Haldim 
Silent Workhorse. The Silent Workhorse compensates for his lack of charisma with hard work and competence. He rarely takes pride in p of place, instead letting the head of state shine in the sun while he gets the job done. So he increases our industrial capacity, that's great. Also our energy and metal production, plus our rare materials production. But furthermore increases the diplomatic mission cost by 20. Uh, our foreign minister is Saeed Halim as well, so he's both the head of government and the foreign minister. Here we could change him. Uh, this guy is pretty much defining how much uh, I think money we'll need for our actions. Influence nation chance, coup nation chance. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep uh, Salim Haid. Armaments Minister Mehmet Javid, he's a theoretical scientist. He decreases secret weapons research time and industrial research time, but lowers the industrial capacity by a percent. Do we have anyone better? Ismail Anier would lower the aircraft research time, that wouldn't be that bad. And this guy would. Oh, he's not that bad either. Yeah, we have a lot of guys. Uh, most of them are specialized in things that we do not need now. Upgrades minus 7%. Energy production minus 1%. Metal production, okay, no. But later on, we might say yes to that guy. Money production minus 10%. Consumer goods need plus 2%, but industrial production plus 3. And energy production, metal production, and rare materials production plus 3. Damn, this guy is good. Uh, how much... Uh, he will lower our money production by... Uh, 0.17. But I see plus three percent. That's not that bad. I see plus five. Energy production plus five. Metal production plus five. Rare material production plus five. Okay, this guy has nothing bad, so we're going with him. Uh, that increased our descent by a bit, but I do not care. Hussein Sabri, administrative genius, is an ardent laborer who uses his personnel and modern techniques to the utmost to improve the war effort. The administrative genius is often a young engineer or scientist, free-thinking and innovative. He always tries to be objective and impartial to further the common good. Okay, Minister of Security, we have Backstabber. Consumer goods need plus 5%. God damn it, he's terrible. Um... Manpower growth plus 10%, foreign manpower use plus 10%, money production lowered. No. Consumer goods need minus 10%, well that's good. Way better than what we had now, so let's increase that. Um, let's choose him, which will further increase our descent, but he's good. He's good. Consumer goods minus 10% is good. The crime fighter has devoted his life to combating crime. The people, uh, sorry, the people like him, oh, pe the people like his firm grip and feel reassured that they are safe. Head of intelligence. Hmm. Politic specialist. He has quite a lot of things. Influence nation, fun partisan chance. Oh, but I would like Suleiman Oskari. IC plus 2, energy production plus 2, metal production plus 2, industrial specialist. I, mean, I don't really use that uh, espionage that much, so... Yeah, let's go with Suleiman Oskari. Man, we're bumping the descent by quite a lot, but damn, look at those guys we can get. Ahmed Izzet, artillery brigade build time and cost minus 6%, okay, that's useful for us right now. Self-prepared artillery, heavy armored, land unit speed, army use, 
you need organization again. Okay, we're keeping this guy. Who is he? School of fire support. The chief of staff teaches that fire support is the essence of modern warfare. Chief of the army is a Mayo Enver. I know this guy. Trenches war expert. Infantry build time and cost. Artillery brigade time and cost. Infantry defense combat modifier. Artillery brigade defense modifier. Land for build time. Wow, he's good. Uh, yeah, you know what? We'll keep him. I don't want to. We are focused on infantry anyways. Infantry brigade. Artillery brigade. Yeah, he's helping us right now. Chief of the Navy. Uh, well, unless there's someone who... No. Okay, we'll keep him. We're not focused on the Navy at all, so... And Chief of the Air Force. Air Superiority Doctrine. Fighters build time and cost minus 5. Interceptor. Anti-aircraft brigade. Fighters... Okay, this guy is good. I think we'll keep him. Yeah, and we, we can have only Army Aviation Doctrine. Tactical Bomber. Okay, we're keeping this guy. So we have dealt with our cabinet. And we can now continue playing. Now, I know this is a lot for you guys to get. And I know this is taking forever. But, on the other hand, this is very important, guys. If you deal with this, you are pretty much set for the game and for a successful campaign, I would say.